Good evening and welcome to Thai PBS News Service. I'm Super John Clean Suwan. The Meteorological Department is warning that through October the 6th and 7th, the northeast and central regions of Thailand will be affected by a tropical depression currently centered over the middle of the South China Sea. The Met Office, however, insists that the storm will not have much effect on Bangkok, but excessive rainfall could cause localized flooding. The Meteorological Department forecasts today that a tropical depression centered in the middle of the South China Sea is likely to become a tropical storm around October the 2nd through the 5th, but is expected to have limited or no effect on the capital. However, the storm is expected to make landfall in central Vietnam around October the 4th and the 5th. On Saturday and Sunday, the storm will hit southern Laos, the northeast and central regions of Thailand. It will cause very heavy downpours, as much as 90 millimeters per hour in places, leading to localized flooding. The Meteorological Department has sent weather reports to the Water and Flood Management Commissions to help plan for water drainage. In the most recent flood prevention effort, the Department of Public Works and Town and Country Planning has installed water pumps at 13 local stations in the South Rangsit Irrigation Project in an attempt to speed up water removal. Additionally, 40 water pumps have been reserved for emergency use. Water hyacinth have also been removed from canals to clear the way for drainage to reduce the impact of any floods. And today is the first day Don Myung Airport returns to full commercial operation. The migration of low-cost carriers to Don Myung from the newer Suwanapum Airport will, it is believed, to help reduce the main international airport. Meanwhile, the Airports of Thailand Public Company Limited is racing to expand its services into Terminal 2 to increase its passenger handling capacity. Kun Bandit Ke Bandit, our reporter, was at Don Myung earlier today to soak up the ambience of its official reopening and a move that seems to have met the traveling public's approval. Here's more. Today marks the official reopening of Don Myung Airport with several low-cost carriers moving from Suwannapum to operate their full service here at Don Myung. One of the main reasons for the migration was to ameliorate congested conditions at the Suwannapum International Airport. The airports of Thailand Public Company Limited President Anirudh Thanom Gulabut said that the reopening of Don Mung Airport will help reduce passenger volume at Suwannapum Airport by as much as 20 percent, while the daily number of passengers at Don Mung is expected to more than double, despite concerns about heavy traffic around Don Mung on its inaugural day of full commercial operation. Travelers said they did not face any trouble getting to the airport. The traffic coming in was fine, um, we came on the tollway, um, coming into the airport was fine, coming back was very, very congested, you know, but um, yeah, we, we got here in fairly quick time. There wasn't, uh, coming back here was a little bit congested? Coming away from the airport was congested, yeah, yeah, but okay. getting here wasn't too bad at all. Uh, we left Sukhumvit and were here in maybe 20, 25 minutes, so it wasn't too bad, yeah. The traffic was uh, surprisingly really well actually, so uh, it took me less than 45 minutes to come here from downtown. Uh, I stayed at the Four Seasons, so it was an easy, comfortable ride uh, over here. How about if you take the tollway, I guess, so we took the tollway. So uh, I'm not sure if you come the other way, uh, how, how the traffic would be, uh, yeah. Passengers were also satisfied with the speedy service at check-in and immigration counters, with short queues and well-equipped staff. For example, for the convenience of passengers, the AOT opened up 34 counters for immigration checks. In a day, there are four chiefs of 300 immigration officers on duty, and the inspection time for one passenger is as fast as 45 seconds. According to the AOT, there are 281 flights in service today. 83 of them are international flights, and the remaining 198 of them are domestic flights. While well, the number of travelers per day is expected to exceed 42,000, the AOT said that it only takes passengers around 20 minutes to go through the departure process, from check-in to immigration to arriving at the departing gate. The general airport standards is around an hour. At the moment, there are five commercial low-cost airlines operating from Don Myung Airport, with 14 other airlines offering shuttle flights and some private jets. Since there are limited international airways, 
passengers who arrive at Don Mueang from a domestic departure point and need to get on to an international departure that is not operated from Don Mueang. The passenger will have to transit to Suwanpum Airport, but rest assured that the transportation is not a hassle. Behind me is an example of a free of charge shuttle bus that links the Don Mueang Airport to the Suwanpum Airport for connecting flights. The duration from Don Mueang to Suwanpum is around an hour. Each bus can accommodate roughly 35 passengers, and there are eight to nine buses in service throughout the day, or from 5 a.m. to midnight. To enhance Don Mueang service capabilities, Deputy Transport Minister Chatta Sitipan has instructed the AOT to launch a free parking campaign at Don Mueang Airport's seven-floor parking facility for three months. Meanwhile, the government will raise to extend the airport rail link to Don Mueang, a project worth 30 billion baht which at the moment is expected to take up to three and a half years to complete. While Terminal 1 at Don Mueang Airport can accommodate 16 million passengers annually, the AOT is renovating the second terminal to add an additional capacity of 9 million in an effort to make Don Mueang a hub for low-cost airlines. Bandit Gat Bandit, Thai PBS. Thank you, Bandit. And today is the inaugural day of the government's rice pledging program for the 2012 to 2013 season. In many provinces, however, the scheme received little attention from the farmers. Nevertheless, the Commerce Ministry confirmed its readiness and will be seeking the cabinet's approval for a budget of 405 billion baht in its attempt yet again to pledge every grain of rice. The ministry also insists that this project does not breach the constitution as claimed by some opponents of the scheme. Last week, academics from the National Institute of Development Administration, or NIDA, and Thammasat University submitted a petition to the Constitution Court alleging that the state's rice pledging scheme is a violation of Article 84, Bracket 1 of the Charter, which stipulates that the government has to support a free and fair trade market through free market mechanism. However, Wachari Wimuktayon, Permanent Secretary at the Commerce Ministry, said that the ministry's advisors and legal team are both in agreement that the government's rice pledging program is legitimate. In fact, the policy follows the article in question, which is that the government must protect farmers' interests and rights. The Commerce Permanent Secretary also noted that the rice pledging scheme helps raise total farmers' income by between 140 to 200 billion baht, for those who participated in program and 60 billion baht for those who benefited from the rise in crop prices due to the pledging scheme. In the fourth quarter, the Commerce Ministry will collaborate with leading rice exporters to accelerate rice exports. Meanwhile, the first day of the rice pledging program for the 2012 to 2013 season in many provinces was met with little enthusiasm from farmers, including those from Pisnulo, Kampang Pit, Muriram, Sisiget, and Uwanrachatani provinces. A large number of farmers in these areas have seen their crops harmed by constant downpours. Farmers, however, are expected to harvest and pledge their crops at the end of October. Despite the Anti-Money Laundering Office push for tough legislation on anti-money laundering and funding of terrorism in compliance with the Intergovernmental Financial Action Task Force, Thailand is likely to remain blacklisted or remain grouped among high-risk countries for money laundering. Since February the 16th of this year, Thailand has been blacklisted or grouped among high-risk countries for money laundering by the Intergovernmental Financial Action Task Force on Money Laundering, or FATF, after failing to enact stronger legislation to counter money laundering in the fight to combat the funding of terrorism. Thailand's status is due for a review in February next year. In spite of the push for laws on anti-money laundering and funding of terrorism by a joint standing committee on commerce, industry and banking in collaboration with the Anti-Money Laundering Office or AMLO, the bills are unlikely to make it into law in time for the second and third reading by the House and the Senate. Rishai Atrasakon, Secretary General of the Thai Chamber of Commerce, admitted that the FATF is likely to keep Thailand on the blacklist but believes that the Anti-Money Laundering Office can clarify and foster understanding with FATF on this matter. Because of Thailand's delay in amending its anti-money laundering laws, some exporters have to undergo stricter scrutiny by their client countries, including having to provide very detailed and more frequent verification of their documents and finances. So far, however, these additional measures have not directly impacted their businesses. 
A group of protesters calling for social justice say that they will protest in front of government house tomorrow to follow up on promises made by the government. Members of the Kabuan Gang Prashar Chuan Pur Sang Kom Thi Ben Tham, or the People's Movement for a Just Society Movement, also known as P Move, will gather in front of government house tomorrow on Radomnen Avenue to follow up on government policies and promises to help the poor. The movement is threatening to camp out in front of the government house. A representative of the P Move group was reported to have negotiated with a Pua Thai representative today. Fifteen representatives of the group will tomorrow meet the prime minister. The movement claims the government could do so much more to help alleviate the suffering of the poor and underprivileged, but are neglecting to do so. Authorities are believed that the dead body of a Caucasian male left in the forest of Saraburi province may be the body of a manager of a design company who was involved in a tense court case with his ex-wife. The body of a Caucasian male was found lying against a tree in the forest of Saraburi's Gangkhoi district yesterday. The dead man is believed to be 50-year-old Oswald Henrich Duvel, an African national. Ari Nutwong, who claims to be a friend of the deceased, says Oswald went missing after he had called her on the 29th of September to say that he intended to visit his three-year-old son in Batum Thani's Lamluka district. After hearing the news of the discovery of the body of a Caucasian man, Ari coordinated with authorities to view photos of the dead man and say she is confident that the dead man is indeed her friend, who was the manager of a product design company. The dead man is reported to have been shot in the mouth, left dressed in only underwear and a wristwatch. An autopsy is underway. Police revealed that Oswald was involved in an acrimonious court case against his former wife over the custody of his three-year-old son. Yet police have not yet officially confirmed that the dead man is Oswald. The Futsal World Cup 2012 is scheduled to be held in Thailand early next month. However, FIFA is still questioning whether or not one of the four main stadiums will be completed on time. Jaime Yasa, FIFA's representative, checked out Bangkok Futsal Arena today and spent three hours talking to Thai authorities who are insisting the stadium, which still does not even have a roof, will be ready for action when the tournament starts. The seventh FIFA Futsal World Cup is due to take place in Thailand from November the 1st to the 18th in Bangkok and Khorat. 24 teams across the globe will participate. Despite the construction delay due to the recent rains, FIFA's representative remains optimistic that this stadium will be ready. However, FIFA and Thai authorities will have to come up with a plan B if the Bangkok Futsal Arena is not finished by October the 20th deadline. FIFA will make an official announcement next week about its view of the delays at this stadium. And finally, for boxing fans, Thai fight Muay Thai superstar Bua Khao Ban Cha Me, previously known as Bua Khao Bo Pramuk, will get the chance to fight the world's top fighter Manny Pacquiao in December. The match is organized through the cooperation of the Thai and Filipino governments. In celebration of His Majesty the King's 85th birthday and Crown Prince Wachila Longkorn's 60th birthday, boxing promoters are putting together a not-to-be-missed match between Bua Khao Ban Cha Me and Filipino world boxing champion Manny Pacman Pacquiao. Pacquiao is the first eight-division world champion, winning 10 world titles, as well as being the first fighter to win the Lionel Championship in four different weight classes. This will also be the first time for many years that Bua Khao will enter the ring not as a Muay Thai boxer. Boxer. Details of this fight will be given after the Thai and Filipino organizers sign a contract on October the 5th. This fight is expected to be held at the Royal Plaza on Radamnan Avenue on December the 21st. The bow will be broadcasted live to 177 countries around the world. This special event is expected to be the start of more cooperation between Thailand and the Philippines. Now that is one match many people will not miss. I'm Super Drunk Lin Swan saying goodnight for now. Swadikap.